A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Keep justice and do righteousness, for soon my salvation will come and my deliverance be revealed. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord, and to be his servants, everyone who keeps the Sabbath and does not profane it, and holds fast my covenant, these I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. And A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Lord A Samaritan woman said to Jesus, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain, and you say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem will you worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming, and now is, 
when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For such the Father seeks to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The Gospel of the Lord. So the scene from today's gospel is taken out of the broader scene of Jesus' encounter with the Samaritan woman at the well. And we can see throughout that scene is her slow conversion through conversation with Jesus, that she comes to know him as the Savior, and she then becomes one of the first evangelists to go out and draw an entire town back to Christ, back to experience from him what she has already experienced from him. So it's a very beautiful scene, and here we're focusing specifically on worship. And the Lord says several very interesting things. He says, you worship what you do not know, we worship what we know. And so what he is doing there is he is showing that knowledge is very important for right worship. Just as knowledge is really important for love, If I say that I love someone that I don't know, it doesn't mean anything. If I say that I love someone whom I know and whom I know well, well, then it has more meaning. And so also in worship, we cannot direct our worship to something that we do not know or do not have sufficient knowledge of. And so the worship that comes from Christ is worship in spirit and truth because not only does he give us knowledge of the Father, not only does he give us knowledge so that we can worship in truth, but he also gives us his grace. And through his grace, we become temples of the Holy Spirit. And so our worship of God can be a worship that is in truth and in knowledge, but also in his grace, in faith, in love, in charity, in all of the things that comes with grace, all of the life that comes with grace. And this is important for us because in order to worship God as he wants to be worshiped, it means that we need to be in his grace so that we ourselves are temples of the Holy Spirit and that we also need to be filled with his truth so that our worship is rightly ordered, rightly directed, that it is a worship in spirit and truth. And when we become temples of the Holy Spirit as we celebrate today the dedication of the cathedral, so also we are called to be what the cathedral is and represents. We are called to acknowledge and to live as temples of the Holy Spirit and to be aware of that fact, that within us should be an ongoing worship of God, that within us should be, as we saw from the prophet Isaiah, that we should become a house of prayer, our own selves, that our interior should reflect what we desire the church to be. As beautiful as we want the church to be is as beautiful as we should make our interior. We should fix our interior in the same way that the church is laid out, with Christ himself at the center, at the center taking the focus, taking the worship, taking the adoration, because that is where true adoration, worship, should be directed to God himself. And so also in our soul, the center should be God. And our interior should also reflect what happens in a church where scripture is read and opened up, where the word of God is something that is sought to be understood. We should be reflecting on the word of God because that is what fills us with that same truth so that we can worship in truth. But also, it is where God himself has celebrated the incarnation. And so we are temples of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit dwells in us. God dwells in us by grace. To be aware of that fact should change our life and our attitude, that God is always with us, not as someone who simply just watches over us but who is present within us by his grace. 
The presence of the Holy Spirit is what allows us not only to know God, but also to love him with his own love and to love all things with his own love. And so when we do that, when we love as God loves, when we know as God knows through his truth, and when we ourselves become and are conscious of the fact that we are temples and turn ourselves into houses of prayer, places where God is loved, adored, and worshipped, then we are accomplishing what the Lord desires in us. Amen.